I think all of us would like to believe that if we're in a situation where we see the warning signs of danger, we take action. But is this always the case? Well, it turns out we don't always take action. And one of the reasons we don't is known as the bystander effect. So what's that? Well, the bystander effect is really well illustrated by an experiment called the smoke-filled room. And what they did in this experiment was they got students and they brought them in to do an exercise. But before they did the exercise, they said, please go into this room and fill in this questionnaire. Now, of course, the experiment was actually happening in the room where they were filling in the questionnaire. Because what the experimenters did was they pumped harmless smoke into that room. Now, when they pumped hard and stoke into that room, you'd expect that when the students would see that smoke, they'd do something about it. And the good news is that in 75% of the cases, the students reported the smoke pretty quickly. Then what the experimenters did was, rather than putting people in the room individually to do the questionnaire, they put three people in the room. Now, what do you think happened then? You know, rationally, we'd expect the probability of reporting the smoke would go up. We've got three people who can actually report the smoke. But that's not what happened. What actually happened was the 75% chance of reporting the smoke quickly drops to 38%. In other words, you put more people in the room and you lower the probability of that smoke being reported quickly. It gets worse. Put a real student in the room and put two actors in the room with the student. And the actor's job is to ignore the smoke, to cough, to open a window, to make it look like the smoke's no big deal. What happens in that situation? Well, our percentage of reporting the smoke quickly drops again, this time to 10%. So we go from one person in the room who reports the smoke 75% of the time, all the way to one person in the room with two actors finding no, no problem, and that percentage drops from 75% to 10%. With more people, we're less likely to take action when we see warning signs. Now, what's going on here? Well, there's two things going on. The first one is called diffusion of responsibility. And this is pretty much exactly what you'd expect, that when we are on our own and we see the warning signs of failure, we know we have to take action because we're the only one there. But put us in a group, and what actually happens is we believe that there are other people in that room much more eminently qualified to take action than we are, and we hesitate. The second one, which I find really interesting, is known as social definition. When we're in an ambiguous situation, like these students were in the smoke-filled room, what happens is we can't rationally work out what to do. So what do we do? We look to the people around us, and if they are unconcerned with what they see, then we are unconcerned also. I think it's really important, you know, we all believe inside our organizations that when we see the warning signs of failure, we will take action to do something about it. But we have to be aware that when people are in groups, we will see the bystander effect and it will get in the way of rational decision making.